Hello, this is Ed Balduff with SolidFire. Today I'm going to take you through some examples and demos of how to use the SolidFire puppet providers to manage uh, accounts, volumes, and volume access groups on the SolidFire cluster. So let's begin with, uh, you can see I've got four windows here. Uh, the top two windows are logged into my puppet server and the bottom two windows are logged into uh, two different clients. So we're going to kind of show you how to do this in two different ways here. So let's start by uh, looking at our uh, manifest uh, that we're going to use. Uh, basically, we're going to use the, let me make this window a little bigger, we're going to use the generic um, site.pp uh, manifest and, and I'll kind of walk you through uh, what we've got going on here. So the first, first stanza here is actually the second thing we're going to work on, which is um, where we define the the node to be the name of the solid fire cluster. Um, we're going to use the puppet device con constructs to, to take advantage of this. But you can see I've gotten here defined for the node solid fire uh, local domain, uh, an account and a volume. You can see I've uh, titled this account um, the puppet device here so that we know this is coming from the device construct and then we've named the volume um, dev dash volume so we know that also is coming from the device construct. Um, if we move down here a little bit uh, we can see that I've defined a couple of variables the uh, the URL is something you'll see me use a couple times here and this is basically a compound URL with a, a, a cluster admin account and password and then the domain name or you could be the IP address of the SolidFire cluster and then you'll see we use the SolidFire uh, storage virtual IP address here also in this. Um, and so this is defining a node that is our client. Um, you can see that's actually down here. Um, should come up and say client. Yes, it does. Okay. And so um, as we walk down through this, you can see I, I define a bunch of things here. Uh, some of these we'll use in various different spots. Um, for instance, volume names and volume access groups can't have um, dots, so we'll replace them with dashes. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to go down through and we'll define an account. So we're going to go create an account on the SolidFire cluster. Uh, then you can see here we are defining a volume on the SolidFire cluster. And we'll continue down here. We set up a volume access group which we will include our actual initiator, which we defined up above here. That's the initiator for our client. Um, we will uh, use the volume, which we created above. So you can see uh, SolidFire volume is called out down here. Um, and then we're gonna start executing some commands on our client to, to show some real usage for this, right? So we're gonna go through and um, exec the iSCSI discovery. Uh, we'll create a mount point. Then we'll put a, a physical volume or a PE group on here, um, make a volume group on that, that, that volume that we're creating. Um, we'll create a logical volume here, and then we'll go down, we'll make a file system, and we will, so here's the miking the file system, ext4, and then we will make a, uh, we will actually mount the volume up. So this example shows how you could uh, set up, a, a, and I'm going back up here in this, how you could set up a manifest for a certain client, uh, one of the servers in your, your network somewhere that needed to have uh, storage for a database where hypothetically setting this up or mounting it to something called database. And then the rest of your puppet manifest for this, this node could, uh, configure all the rest of the database goodness. So let's go over here and we'll start our um, our master server. We're gonna start it in verbose mode and we're not gonna put it in the background so we can see the outputs that are coming out of it. Um, we'll go down here to our client and uh, what we're gonna do is, if, if, I mean, if it all works well, this should be uh, not very uh, entertaining. Um, but uh, that's what we, why we do these things to make this all out of magic. So we're going to run um, Puppet Agent. We'll run it in the test mode, so it'll just apply it now, um, not go into the background and do it later. You can see our server um, jumped up and said it was doing some things, so it's processing the manifest and sending that process manifest over to the client. Um, the client's going down through here, spitting out some messages, um, telling us it's ensuring things are created. You can see those at the bottom. 
uh, at this point in time, it's uh, mounted the, the volume and it's, it's uh, creating the file system, which takes a little bit of time here. And there we have it, we're done. So um, you can see it's said all kinds of good things, but let's go see what we actually did. So um, if we go and do a, a DF, we can see that we actually have our uh, database uh, group logical volume mounted on uh, mount database. But let's uh, look into a little bit more of this. If we uh, do um, this, you can see that there is our uh, iSCSI connection to the solid fire. Um, we've named things. So again, if we go over here to our, our uh, manifest, we can see I named things um, solid fire account name here was actually the fully qualified domain name of this client and that account name winds up right here in the, the um, string for the IQN. So um, we can also go look at the solid fire itself. So you can see beforehand it we had nothing there. When we refresh the uh, volume screen you can see that we have a volume called client dash local domain dot dash sdb and um, we can actually see the account over here. So once we refresh this um, and we get the account name, then we go back over here to volumes. We should actually get the account name to come up here in the volume screen also. Um, you see we've created a volume access group so we can go look at those in detail. It also has client the local domain. Um, if we edit that, we can see you know it's got the volume in here and here's the actual um, IQN that we had up over here. So it did everything we expected it to do and mounted up our volume. So that's, again, it's not very uh, exciting. There's not a lot that happens there unless it was a demo and Murphy were to show up. So let's go look at the uh, puppet device concept. So the puppet device concept um, is such that uh, basically you have a different uh, client. It's called puppet device. And it's a proxy for uh, the network device. And so it allows us to go back to the server. So when we run it over here, it will go over to the server. It will gather the information up uh, and, and pull that back. So one of the things you'll notice up here is that in this manifest, uh, we had to put a URL. We put this URL that I defined up there in every resource that we define in here. When we look at the the manifest for the actual network node, you'll notice there's no login information. That actually comes from a file on this client. Um, so if we do a more of, you can see there is a device file here and this device file gives us that URL. Um, so it has that URL all in that device file and it's there. Um, the challenge with this is is that it, it's a separate client and it's going off and it's creating these volumes and the accounts on the solid fire, but it has no relevance to this other client. So it could create that, that volume and the account and make it an event, a, a volume access group, but then we need a synchronization mechanism to go over to this, this client and have him mounted up. So that's why we find the, the first thing I showed here a little more, the, the puppet agent and the puppet agent talking to the solid fire um, a little more useful, um, but that has the drawback of every puppet agent is going off to the solid fire. And so if we have too many of those, we may uh, overwhelm the API capabilities of the solid fire. So having a single um, uh, puppet device would push all those API calls through a single host, which would make it a little more manageable. Also could be some security issues in there too. So let's see how this works. Um, we basically use the puppet command with the subcommand device. Um, we point it at our puppet server, and so it too will go over. You'll see that the server over here on the left is uh, is is doing some things. It's compiled a catalog. We've got uh, some warning over there about a a qualified domain name, but that's not really what we're looking for. What we want to see is if these two things here have been created, um, and so. The magic has happened, and there it is. We have a, a, an account called Puppet Device, and we actually have a uh, volume called Puppet Device. 
So a couple other things you'll notice here in the, uh, the manifest. On both of these manifests, we've put in um, IOPS. So we're putting in the IOPS for that, uh, that volume. Um, you can see those come over here to the solid fire, managed accordingly as it should be. Um, and so one of the things we can do now is we could modify this, this uh, manifest and make this, so uh, I don't know, we'll just make these something so that we can tell they're different. And uh, we'll write that off. And now we'll apply this again. So again, we'll see some stuff come out of our uh, puppet master here. Um, this is a, has happened. Of course, we need to um, refresh this screen. So we will do that. And you can see here that we've uh, done our changes to the um, quality of service as requested by changing the manifest. So again, that's changing the manifest on the, the Puppet uh, server. So um, one last thing. Um, you can see we, we ran this twice, and it did what it was supposed to. And now if we want to uh, remove that, that volume, we can change this to ensure that's absent. Uh, we can run this again, and um, again, it'll go off and, and do its thing. It doesn't show much, um, but if we go back to our volumes and we refresh it here, you'll see that it's gone. So we uh, obey the present and the absent commands in the manifest. So hopefully that was a, a good demonstration of what the newly released uh, Puppet modules for solid fire can do. And with that, I will wrap up.